puberty. Okay, am I clear? Which factor of hormones basically is responsible for onset of puberty? And this is also and there and one theory has been given. Sorry. Hello. Am I clear? The someone was there. They was talking. Am I clear? Yes, sir. कोई कोई बोल रहे ना? तो आई नो खाली बैकग्राउंड बड़ा क्वेश्चन आ जाए है। Other please let me know what factor is responsible for puberty. This is the postal disease of GN RS. कुन्ह एंड तो फिनिशिंग हार्मोन. Ten of you please tell me yes. Then I will proceed. Otherwise I will not proceed. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Seven. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Then I have told that there is postal release of GnRS is there, and scientists has found that basically this leptin hormone, okay, leptin hormone, is somehow responsible for the release of the uh, postal release of GnRS, the leptin. That is leptin hormone uh, is. The source is adipose tissue. Leptin, leptin. The source of leptin is adipose tissue. So this shows that when the adipose tissue is uh, starts to release the leptin, then if uh, at onset of puberty, then the, there will be postal release of GnRH will occur, and that will onset the puberty. Now let us discuss on other ones. Okay, what is spermatogenesis? We are already knowing the formation of sperm from spermatogonia. Begins with the onset of the puberty. Until unless the first interest in the pubertal phase, there will be no spermatogenesis occur because this spermatogonia will be in resting condition. Okay, that that will be resting condition. They will not undergo the spermatogenesis process. The entire period of spermatogenesis from spermatogonia to this spermatogenesis takes about seventy-four days. So the entire days from this. The genesis, the formation of mature is only seventy-four days. So, two testes of human adult produce about one twenty million sperm per day. Okay, one twenty million sperm per day. So, this is this is um, this is the this can be for seventy-eight, seventy-four days for the entire period of spermatic genesis. Okay, this is the thing. Now again, now now let us discuss on. I have told you that this one figure, this uh, this spermatogonia, uh, until the person reaches in puberty phase, this is in dormant phase. But when the person reaches at this puberty phase, now these steps will occur. Now let let, let me discuss this spermatogonia. When the person reaches at puberty stage, then this spermatogonia starts to Cell uh, division, mitotic cell division, they will undergo mitotic cell division, and this spermatogonia, this is the, the divided one, okay? This spermatogonia that will mature to form. This one is mature to form the primary spermatocytes. Look at here, primary spermatocytes. Now, this primary spermatocytes will form what is secondary spermatocytes. Spermatogonia, this is spermatogonia get mature. And forms primary spermatocytes and to the secondary spermatocytes. And this process there is cell division, mitotic division one. So the chromosome no more. Slide change, why no? Why no? Okay. How is it, sir? Will take care, sir. I manage your problem. I understand. Then we will be formed when the pubertal. These all the steps will be there when the person reaches that is pubertal stage. Okay, and this primary spermatocyte, this matches from mitochondria. Then this will go undergo mitotic cell division one. 
and to form this uh, this secondary spermatocytes. Now there is there is uh, their diploid number of chromosome two n will be n. Okay, so this chromosomal number is reduced over here. So from spermatocytes primary to the secondary meiotic division is there first meiotic division. Then in this phase, the two n will be converted into n. Now again, this second spermatocytes again undergo meiotic division second. Okay, that that will not affect the chromosomal number. The haploid and haploid. Okay, this is also haploid. This is also haploid. This is haploid. But this one is diploid. Okay, this one, this one, and this one is diploid. Okay, and when these primary spermatocytes convert into second spermatocytes, at this case, chromosomal number is reduced. So at this phase, okay, one, two, three, okay, like that. Okay. This n n n. Now, second is spermatocytes. We we'll give that spermatids, and that will go on differentiation. That process is known as spermatic conversion, spermatic maturation, from spermatogonia. That is differentiation or final maturation. It's known as spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis. Okay. Uh, this is also the part of spermatogenesis. Now, if you look at here again, and uh, now if you look at it now, um, the slides also I will show. If we look at a one, okay, this one spermatogonia, one spermatogonia will produce okay, about about 512, 512 spermatids, mature sperm. Okay, about they will produce 512 mature spermatid or mature sperm. One, one spermatogonia. Now, spermatogonia follicular minor cell division with the onset of puberty that I have told you. And then on stage of puberty, this uh, this spermatogonium proliferate, or they will start to produce uh, different uh, their daughter cells, or like that they will form the different uh, number of cells and mitotic division. Now, mature spermatogonia are called primary spermatocytes. Primary undergo meiotic division, reducing the number of chromosome, and that second spermatocytes, spermatids and spermatozoa have haploid number of chromosome. Okay. This is the thing that is important. So I have highlighted on this one. Okay, primary to secondary. This will chromosome number get uh, reduced. Have uh, reduced number. Now if you look at here. Now conversion of spermatid to mature sperm. So the conversion of this spermatids into mature sperm is known as spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis means conversion of the spermatids to mature sperm. This is known as spermio, okay, meiogenesis, and it takes about 21 days. It takes about 21 days under the influence of hormones like FSH and estrogen. That I have discussed recently. This is the importance of the uh, estrogen. So the testosterone are required in all the phases, but estrogen. If you look at here, estrogen, this is has the main important role on this phase, estrogen. So estrogen is main important. I have told you estrogen also produced from the from the fertility cell, isn't it? Uh, they are also producing the estrogen. Now, if you look at here, the hormonal factor that influences spermatogenesis. What are different hormones that will influence the uh, test? Uh, the uh, hormone that will stimulate spermatogenesis formation of response are testosterone, here as the other estrogen and growth hormone. The growth hormone. Why the growth hormone? Suppose the person is having pituitary uh, pituitary uh, drop. Okay, pituitary drop. In case of pituitary drop, growth hormone is reduced. The then this can leads to the uh, infertility also. Okay, so drop can drop vision can lead to the pituitary drop. Okay, not other drop. Pituitary drop can be infertile due to the absence of the This growth hormone. So growth hormone is important for the okay. It's the important function, and there are different hormones that are also responsible for spermatogenesis, and they will influence the spermatogenesis. Clear? Am I clear? It is clear. Yes, sir. This portion is clear, isn't it? Now let me discuss on this one. Okay, semen. Ejaculated during each uh, semen ejaculated during each ejaculation averages about so each from each ejaculation the semen uh, that will be released is about 3.5 ml of semen is released per ejaculation 
the sperm count is about 120 million per ml of semen. So there is a 3.5 ml of semen is there. You can multiply, and that that amount of the sperm will be released. Okay, for example, but the question is asked, what is sperm count? Then you have to tell that it's about 120 million per ml of semen. If you look at here, in my previous slide also, I have told you that if you look at two testes also produces about 120 million sperm per day. Okay, 120. Million sperm per day will be produced, and if you look at here also, 120 million sperm, um, sperm per uh, per ml of semen. Okay, this can be taken for your uh, easy. You can correlate on that also. So normal sperm moves in fluid medium at velocity of so at the velocity of one to four mm per minute. This is the normal velocity of the sperm, and in some books they have written that about the average. Uh, velocity is about 3 mm per minute. So this is the velocity. Now, if you look at here, sperm life. What is the, what is the sperm life? How much uh, this is ejaculated? Okay, sperm will survive in the female genital tract. It's about one to two days. It will only survive for one to two days in female genital tract. But if you want to store the sperm for um, for years, also you can store. Uh, you use the pack preservation or different preservative will be there, and they are using. But uh, in relation to female genital tract, the life is about only one to two days. Anyone who can tell me the average life of the ova or the ovum? Anyone who can tell me in the female genital tract? Or sorry, twenty-four to forty-eight hours. Twenty-four uh, to Forty-eight hours. Yes. Since twenty-four to forty-eight hours, what are you doing? Hello. Who told you? What? Which? From which? Google. 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 Uh, the life expectancy of ovum or ova is about two to three days, but the sperm it is only one to two days. Okay. Now, um, now let us discuss what the capacity of sperm. Now I have told you just if you look at here, I have told you that how this uh, this sperm is being formed and what are the in which stage the sperm will be formed at the beginning of the uh, of the sperm. Production of sperm at the onset of puberty, the sperm starts to form, and I have told you um, the time required and how much it will produce and how much quantity it will produce and different steps for the formation of this sperm. Isn't it? Now the sperm is being formed. Now I have already. Now it, suppose it has been ejaculated. It is it, it's in the female genital tract or in the vagina or cervix. Then it's so a different mechanism. Will occur, okay? Again, they, and then that that is known as capacitation of sperm. What is that capacitation of sperm? That capacitation of sperm will be occurring in female genital tract, okay? Female genital tract, this capacitation of sperm at the zoa will occur. It's not in the male reproductive tract, but it's on the female reproductive tracts that capacitation of the sperm will occur. This is the final maturation. This is the final maturation of the sperm or so matter The final maturation of the sperm will occur, uh, will occur in the female genital tract. So this makes, this capacitation uh, will make the sperm able to fertilize the ovum, okay? This is the final preparatory mechan physiological changes. This capacitation of the is the final Physiological changes that occurs in the female reproductive tract, with um, and that render means that results the sperm able to fertilize. So it will make the sperm viable, competent to fertilize. So what is that capacity of sperm? What is that final physiological changes? What is that final um, maturation development process of this spermatozoa? That is known as the capacity of sperm, and it involves Two stages. Basically, it is uh, it, uh, it, it has got two stages. One is increasing motility of spermatozoa, so it will should just should be increasing motility of spermatozoa. Suppose the sperm is deposited, 
Sarcoides form is deposited in uh, female uh, reproductive tract. Then there should be increase in the motility of sperm or spermatozoa must occur. Otherwise, the fertilization will not occur. And another is facilitating gear preparation for acrosomal reaction. So another is also during the capacitation of the sperm, two things will happen. One is motility of the sperm or spermatozoa increases in tremendous uh, way. So motility of the spermatozoa increases. Another is that it also prepares the sperm for acrosomal reaction. It's preparation only. Okay, acrosomal reaction actually occurs in one of the steps of the fertilization, but it also fatty facilitating their preparation for acrosomal reaction. So in capacitation one is occur this one. Another is that prepare prepare preparation for the acro, uh, this acrosomal reaction. But now question is how they will occur. Anyone who can tell me? Another anyone who can tell me about how this motility of spermatozoa once um, get inside this female uh, reproductive tract uh, get activated anyone can tell me prostate specific antigen hydrolyzes the semitoxin of semen okay okay this, this this can be the one one isn't it and this can be one that i have uh, told you uh, in your previous uh, class also prostate specific antigen is there and they will uh, uh, coagulate it now one will become a liquefied and that will uh, that will uh, releases or that will free uh, the sperm to get mortal isn't it another another is also there this is main important one okay, this, this is seminogelin okay this is also one of the factor another factor main important factor this is actually this is the loss of decap uh, this decapacitation factors okay this uterine and fallopian tube was away various inhibitory factors that just you have told me about these seminogelins, isn't it? One of that can be uh, seminogelins and other factors are also there, but precisely what factors is there, they are that is not in pinpoint. But I have told that this prostate specific antigen they are produced from the uh, from the prostate, isn't it? For the capacitation of the sperm that will occur in the female uh, reproductive tract. So, female reproductive tract in relation to female reproductive tract, we have to tell about the capacitation of the sperm. Uh, suppose so, in relation to the female, uh, this uh, uterine and fallopian tube, there are fluids are there, they will wash away these inhibitor factors. Okay, there are different inhibitor factors which comes along with the semen that will be washed away, okay, washed away by this uh, uterine fallopian and you include okay now another main important one okay this is another main important increasing the mortality of this spermatozoa in the female genital tract one is this uh, uh, this loss of the decapitation factors loss of the decapitation factors i have told you different decapitating factors are being present uh, in the semen so this has to be removed and they are washed by the uterine and the fallopian tubes, uh, fluids. And another is there is also increased activity of the sperm specific calcium channel, CARSPOR, okay? So increased activity of this CARSPOR. So the, there is this is CARSPOR, this is the channel, okay? This is the protein. And this is alkaline sensitive calcium channel, okay? Alkaline sensitive calcium channel. They are actually present on the principal tail of the, of the sperm. So at the principal tail of the sperm, this Casper protein is there, and this is the calcium channel. This is sperm specific calcium channel. It's calcium, this is calcium channel, is sperm specific. So it's, this name is sperm specific calcium channel. So the activity of this Casper, Look at here, Casper. This is the this is the membrane. This is the well, this is the principal tail. Okay, one portion of the principal tail of the sperm. And the uh, uh, influx there will be influx of the calcium. There will be influx of the calcium from the Casper. If you, this is surrounding, and this is look at here. There is the opening of this uh, 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 calcium channel. So calcium 
prevent blocks from the gas for this calcium channel. Okay, so when this form, what makes this gas for uh, this calcium channel get, will be activated? What makes? One is that one factor that will activate this gas for calcium channel is is movement of the sperm from acidic vagina to the alkaline cervical mucus. So when the sperm moves from acidic vagina to the alkaline uh, cervical mucus, okay, the pH will from acidic to alkaline. So this alkaline, this, um, this alkaline nature of this mucus, cervical mucus, causes the activation of this gas for calcium channel. And when this calcium gas for calcium channel get activated, due to the movement of sperm to the cervix and this gas per protein, uh, gas per protein or calcium channel is present in the principal tail of the sperm so alkaline medium causes the activation of this gas per calcium channel and this calcium will get in blocks when the calcium get in blocks you are already knowing calcium in the motility of the uh, sperm this flagella flagellar motility will be tremendously increased. This is not hyperflagellation. So previously the movement of the sperm was quick undulating motion. Now that will convert into the powerful which laps motion. So so the, the motility of the sperm will increases due to the influx of the calcium from this gaspore calcium channel when the sperm reaches to the alkaline so alkaline medium. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Am I clear? Please tell me, other. Please tell me. It's clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Good. This uh, capacitation of this uh, spermatozoa or sperm mature sperm is important for its generation point of view. Okay? Capacitation of sperm. And this is the university exam. So you should be able to write on this, this thing, okay? Another is that another factor that also increases the motility of the sperm. Another factor that also increases the motility of this uh, this spermatozoa is this uh, the sperm moves away from this cholesterol vesicles. The cholesterol vesicles is, uh, is also present in semen. So when after ejaculation, the, uh, the sperm will move away from this vesicles, okay? so that enabling sperm, uh, and that will enable the uh, sperm for uh, for this fertilization, okay, and that enabling acrosome much weaker. So this also facilitating the acrosomal reaction. This is facilitating, value, okay, preparing. Preparing this one, okay. I've told you this one, isn't it? This one, okay. Facilitating the preparation for acrosomal rate. So the removal of the cholesterol, the removal of the cholesterol from or this uh, moving away from the cholesterol vesicles, this form move, moving away or uh, movement or uh, moving away from this uh, cholesterol vesicles will facilitates the preparation for the acrosomal reaction because it makes the acrosome weaker. So this cholesterol is covering the acrosome, okay? The cholesterol is covering the acrosome. So when the sperm moves away from this cholesterol vesicles, then what will happen? The acrosome, that will become the weaker, isn't it? So it also facilitates for the acrosomal reaction. Now, there are different stages in the fertilization that I will not discuss right now in more detail about fertilization, uh, uh, the steps in the fertilization. But for the fertilization, uh, I'll discuss only a few uh, 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 concept regarding this fertilization. This fertilization of course in ampulla of uh, this uterine tube or fallopian tube, ampulla and ampulla, the ampulla of this. Uh, uterine tube or fallopian tube to fertilize to offer the, this question can be asked in the MCQ like that, okay? But the site of fertilization is ampulla of the uh, fallopian tube.
this can be the one question. Uh, the, now, if you look at here, this is the stage, okay, that will show the uh, uh, steps or sequential event in the fertilizer. If you look at here, this the sperm is there, sperm is there. This is capacitated, okay, this is capacitated. Uh, the sperm is already being uh, capacitated. Uh, the capacitation of spermatozoa is already gone there. So, this capacitated sperm, then they will have this powerful movement is there, slack movement is there, they will reach to the ova. This is the section from the ova, okay? This section from the ovum, okay? From the ovum. If you, in the ovum, you can see there is granulous cell is there, okay? There is granulous cell is there. Some, some remnant of the granulous cell is there, cell is there, and there is zonopancidia is there, and other membrane is also there in the ovum. So, when the capacitate uh, sperm reaches to the ovum, then if you look at here, this acrosome is there, okay? This acrosome is there. Acrosome is there. This acrosome consists of the hydrolase enzyme, okay? It consists of this hydrolase enzyme. Okay, am I clear? Is this clear? Hallorinodase enzyme, okay? Sorry. This, uh, this acrosome consists of hello. Ronitase enzyme, okay. Hyaluronidase enzyme, it's acrosome. At uh, this deep, um, this uh, this the gap, okay. And this is the head, and at uh, the gap, acrosome uh, also consists of the hyaluronidase enzyme. And, and thus, hyaluronidase enzymes will dissolve, okay. Dissolve the granular cells, some of the remnant or granular cells. This they get, get this granular cell. They act this granular cells, then they will dissolve by this enzyme present in the acrosome, hyaluronidase enzyme. Now, the sperm reaches to the zona parasita. Now, the sperm reaches to the zona parasita and it will bind to the JP3, J, JP3 receptor. So, they will act, uh, they will bind on JP3 receptor, JP3 receptor, and there is release of. There is again, if you look at here, then binding to this zona palisida when this then acrosomal reaction occurs over here. Then acrosomal reaction occurs, binding sperm with the zona palisida, then acrosomal reaction occurs, and that will release the acrosomal enzyme. So when this sperm binds to zona palisida, there is release of the acrosomal enzyme. Okay, acrosomal enzyme uh, that is mainly the acrosine, mainly the acrosine, and that will help to penetrate. Okay, that will help to penetrate. And if you look at here, this is penetrating, okay? this is penetrating, and ultimately it reaches to this portion membrane. Okay, this is like that. Then there will be the only the head of this, this one nucleus, nucleus. Okay. Nucleus, pronucleus, nucleus, this pronucleus nucleus will go inside the and this male and female pronucleus get combined and they will form the zygote. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Any confusion? So this is the step, okay? The the chemical substance will be produced by this ova and this also facilitates the movement of the sperm as well, okay? So, uh, the olfactory, uh, so olfaction, from the olfaction also, the sperm can move to, towards the ovum, one of the factors, okay? Then it reaches to the, uh, then they will allure, uh, enzyme, okay? Then, they, 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 are, they, will, uh, they will dissolve the granulosa cells, and they will bind to the zona palisida, JP3, okay, JP3, and ultimately they will penetrate, they will penetrate acrosine enzyme, this is the acrosine enzyme, very important enzyme, and ultimately it will reach to the ovum and the nu nucleus will go inside, only the nucleus of the sperm will go inside, the pronucleus of male, this pronucleus is the, this is the pronucleus okay, of the sperm, and the pronucleus of ovum is there, and they will Am I clear? Am I clear? Yes, sir. So this is the thing that you should be knowing. Okay, what well, acrosomal reaction? What acrosomal reaction occurs? 
heterosomal reaction at the occurs at this stage okay when the sperm reaches to zona pellucida then there occurs there will release of acrosin from the acrosome and that causes the for the pain pressure of the sperm and reaches to the inner or cytoplasm of the ovum only this male pronucleus will reach other will be here um, another question can be so this is the thing that is uh, address donor pellucida and membrane structure surrounding this is the this is the membrane surrounding the ovum and acrosin reaction and penetration of donor pellucida so this is the clear there address from here to the cell membrane over the big occlusion and release of sperm nuclear in the cytoplasm of the ovum this is the thing that this is the step now another and now my one one of the question that is the most important one of the question is okay, i will write it here what is that question that i will be write in why does why does only one sperm enter the O C I T E. This is the question. Why does only one sperm enter the ovary? So no one, not other one. Other do not get the injury, isn't it? The police form is being prevented. This question is indirectly say, saying that how this police form will get prevented. Anyone can tell me why only one sperm enters the ovary? Anyone can tell me. Anyone? When uh, one is pump penetrates the ovum, and there is certain uh, membrane change already low side, so that all the is not kind of penetrated. Okay, that membrane potential will be changed. Then the one of the factor is the uh, membrane potential will be changed. That can be one answer. Other? Anyone? Hello, anyone? You can tell me. So please try to find this answer, okay? Please try to find the answer of this question. One is I, I will slightly give you hints on this. So there will be uh, JP3 block will be there, okay? And there is cortical reaction. One is it is related to cortical reaction, and there is JP3 block. JP, what is JP3? This is actually present in the zona pellucida. Okay, this is the one of the receptors. I have told you that when the sperm will bind on JP3 receptor, only on that condition, only on that condition, the, uh, there will be acrosomal reaction locker, isn't it? So when this sperm bind with JP3 receptor of this zona pellucida that is present on sperm, the acrosome reaction will occur, and that acrosome when released, then it will be able to penetrate, and this, this pronucleus, male pronucleus, will be power or the cytoplasm. Now, my, now my question is, now my answer will be, it is related to cortical reaction, okay, cortical granule reaction, okay, and another is JP3 block. What is JP3 block? And uh, cortical degranulation. What is that? Okay, uh, cortical. Uh, cortical granules that will be exocytose. This cortical granules actually present on this ovum. Okay, this uh, this cortical granules just get exocytosed. Okay, and a certain thing will be occurring, and JP3 block will be there, and that will causes the block the Polish permi, and other sperm cannot get injured inside this ovum. So. I have given you a clue on this. Then this cortical granules from this ovum get exocytosed due to one mechanism, and that will cause the JP3 block. And JP3 block, if it is there, JP3 block is there, then no more sperm cannot bind with the JP3 receptor. Then JP3 block is there, then sperm cannot bind with the 
other sperm cannot bind to the receptor GP3, and no this no uh, sacrosomal reaction occur, and no entry of this or uh, this pronucleus build pronucleus to the cytoplasm of the ovum. Okay, okay, everyone, am I clear? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Which one? Sorry. Cortical granules, cortical granules from the ovum get exocytosed, and that will causes the JP3 block. And JP3 block is there no further more binding of the sperm with this JP3, and no chromosomal reaction and subs and other process as well. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Uh, don't find out, okay? I will take your attendance. I will download your attendance. Please don't sign out. Uh, now your class is finished. If you have got any confusion, you can uh, call me, okay? I have given number to your CR. Can take and you can call me on these topics or other topics as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What? Can I go out? Anyone can ask the question? If you have got any question? Please let me know. If you have got any confusion? No?